good seeing each one of you that's here this morning. And uh, stand with me. I want to begin with a scripture this morning. Uh, I read this every now and then. Beautiful three verses. Psalms 135, the first three verses. This is what we're supposed to be about here this morning. It says, Praise you the Lord. Praise you the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O you servants of the Lord. You can stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Say praises unto His name, for it is good. Pleasant. And that ought to make you want to stand. Amen. You're already standing. Amen. And it ought to make you want to sing. And we're getting ready to do that. And now uh, listen, let's give him praise today. He's worthy of all that. Yes, he is. He Amen. really, really is. God bless you. What are we singing, James? Uh, we're finding one because I didn't know that one she was working on. <laughs> Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus, man. What page is that? 317. <laughs>
today. Of course, we do want to remember Sister Alberta, all the family, at the passing of our dear brother Al. Uh, Al's better now. Amen. Uh, I'll tell you, Al made it home to be with the Lord. And, uh, but our, our hearts down here are sad and dark. Yes. Amen. And, uh, but let's really remember uh, Alberta and uh, Robin, all the grandkids, the family. Uh, those arrangements, I believe most of you have, but I'm going to give this in case you don't. Uh, the funeral will be uh, visitation is in the morning at Cozine's in Farmington uh, from 8.30 until 10 o'clock, and then 10 o'clock service. Uh, and then from there we'll be going, I believe it's uh, Dole Run, out that direction, uh, cemetery, is that right? Not no, lit. Okay. So uh, just be real careful for the family, and that is the arrangements for those of you uh, that was interested. Okay? Uh, there's others. We have a lot of folks on the prayer list. I'm going to mention just a couple others. Uh, our pastor friend from Allsbury Chapel, Brother Mike Cramp, his wife went home to be with the Lord last night. Aww. And uh, she'd been battling cancer for a long time. And uh, but she's, uh, she's home with Jesus now. And uh, so let's remember Brother Mike, all of his family, and of course our, our gospel life and uh, the Allsbury Chapel family uh, during this also. Okay? Uh, remember Lana, I've got my phone on buzz, and if I leave in the service, Brother Herb's going to take off right where I left off. Okay? <laughs> but she's having pleurisy, she can't breathe, not doing well, and I just hold her up in prayer this morning also. Okay? Uh, just as far as announcements go, somebody say amen. Sunday school starts next Sunday. Right, amen. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. I think we're all going to be off to a good start on that. Uh, but that will be next uh, Sunday morning at 9.45. Uh, some of the papers out on the foyer table that will tell you where your class will be meeting. But I think it's going to be real good where anybody that wants to social distance can do so and still have a good Sunday school class. All right, so uh, we're looking forward to really uh, kicking that off next Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, excited about that. God bless you. We're glad you joined us this morning. Nice looking. Sunday morning crowd, we're glad you're here. And I tell you what, we're just looking for the Lord to show up in His service. Amen. And Amen. speak to hearts and give victory and meet needs. And when we go home, you know what? We're all going to say, man, it was good being at God's house. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Let's say. Before we sing, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries today? <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. All right, then we're going to see a child of the king. About 439.
song and I couldn't get it right, so then I had to hurry up and work on another one that I knew better. And Blessing. I didn't know you needed me. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Brother Matt.
We come to you in Jesus' name and we pray over these scriptures already. And how we pray the Holy Spirit open our hearts, our minds, our ears. Lord, let folks receive that which you have for them today. Well, if there's somebody here today that is unsaved, there's somebody that's away from God, Lord, I pray for victory in their life this morning. Would you meet the needs of this hour, this very hour? And Lord, I'm so thankful today you're still calling souls to Calvary. So Lord, would you bless now? We need your help. We are dependent upon you. So Lord, would you bless us? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. <clears throat> you know, Jesus told parables, which were stories, in, in a fashion that, you know, what the people, the crowd could relate to them. He always used a parable of something that they could really compare to something going on in their own lives or something they was familiar with. We find Jesus using the wedding. You know what folks back then knew what a wedding was all about. He used sometimes a parable of uh, fishing and sowing. Well, they knew how to plant. They knew how to fish. Yeah. He, they could always relate to what Jesus was saying. And now we see in this parable, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, we find what, uh, the title of this, I put on this, The Wonders of God's Mercy. Isn't God good today? Amen. Amen. The Wonders of God's Mercy. And, and I believe this parable is something them folks back then, they can really relate to. It. They can deal with it. What was the parable about? To sum it all up, it, it's about a man that had a large, large farm. And he, it was so large he needed help to work it. So he had to go out and hire some help. He had to hire some laborers. Well, you know what? That's something they could relate with because they knew what it was to work for a wage back then. Right. And I think they knew what it was to work in a field in the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think they knew what it was to work all day and then get paid at the end of the day for what they had done. So this is something they can all really relate to. Okay? Now, with, with this in mind, let's just kind of start at that first verse, and we're going to make some comments as we go down through this, and then we're going to come back, and I think there's really a good application for us here from the Scriptures this morning. In verse 1, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that is a householder. And by the way, we, I like thinking about the kingdom of heaven, don't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm glad it's good to think today about a place that one day we can leave all this behind yes. and go to be with the Lord forever and forever and forevermore. Hey, into the be in the joy of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Welcome home, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Yeah. And so we find that we're looking here at a parable about going to heaven, the kingdom of heaven. It said it's like a man that is a householder. He's in charge. He's in charge of operations and in charge of hiring and in charge of taking care of things. And it says this, that uh, notice the householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Hey, there was a work to be done, and he needed a good crew to do it. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says he went out very early in the morning. Well, how early do you think he went out? Hey, the work day back then started at 6 in the morning. And it went to 6 at night in the evening. Almost time for the setting of the sun. And they, they was, it was not uncommon for them to have a 12-hour work day. So he's out there really early in the morning, and he's gathering up workers. Look, look at verse 2. Verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now this is, by the way, the first hour. We're going to see it's going to talk about the third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, eleventh hour. This is the first, it's 6 a.m. And you know what? There's some folks up ready to work, and there were some folks who wasn't up ready to work. <laughs> kind of like today, right? Oh, yeah. and, but there was something they could relate to. And he, and he got some that, that agreed to work. That, notice what it said. They agreed. They agreed. He had agreed with the laborers. He made an agreement with them. They would work for a penny for the whole day's labor. And by, by the way, if you, if you want to go back and kind of do the translation of money, what this is worth and that was worth, that penny back then was a day's wages. That was what it was worth 
if you would work, be willing to work a 12-hour day in the field, you'd receive a penny. I mean, that was the right wage. So that was correct. Okay? So he found some workers that agreed to work for that. So all is well. Some accepted, but not everybody. Others did not. You know what? There's still work to be done. And there's plenty, plenty to go around for everybody. And then we notice in verse 3 and 4, verse 3 and 4, and he went out about the third hour, the third hour, and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Notice he found some more people. Third hour. Now, what time is it now? Third hour back then, that's 9 a.m. in the morning. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. And there's, there's still a good nine hours work left to do. I mean, the heat of the day is ahead of them. And he finds a group that's willing to work. And, uh, and they all agree that, you know what? They agree that what he would give them whatsoever is right. I will give you. And they went their way and they went to work. So now we got two groups of people working. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. There's a group that started early, 6 o'clock. We got a second group that said, hey, we'll work for so much. And they agreed with it, what would be right. And they went to work now at 9 o'clock. Well, there's still a great harvest to, to bring forth. There's still plenty of work to do. And then that brings us down to verse 5. Again, he went out about the sixth hour and ninth hour and did likewise. You know what that means? Just exactly what it says. The sixth hour, it's now 12 o'clock noon. Half the day's work is over with. Six hours behind him, six hours to go. It's 12 noon, and you know what? He finds some men that's willing to go out and work in the field, and he'll give them what's right. And believe it or not, it's mid-afternoon now. It's now the ninth hour. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he's still out hiring workers. Can you believe that? I mean, get, get this. Picture this in your mind. When he goes out to get this crew, there's already some folks who's been working for nine hours already. Some have been working for six hours. Some have been working for three hours. And they only got three more hours to go today, and the day's over. And there's something, I'll, I'll work for that. You pay me what, what's right, I'll work for that. And so he gets another crew in. Now here's a three o'clock bunch comes on. And now they're working. Listen, this is a parable I think they can really relate to. That. I think that's just exactly the way it happened back then. Yeah. They would hire, and they would hire others, and they would hire more. <coughs> but notice finally <coughs> verse 6 and 7. This really kind of brings it home. Verse 6 and 7. In about the 11th hour, he went out. Now, by the way, what's the 11th hour? That's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And there's only one hour left to work. It's 5 p.m. And they're going to quit at 6. He goes out at the 11th hour at 5 o'clock. And, you know, notice what it says. He went out and he found others standing idle. By the way, let me just throw this in. The day's almost over. Why would you still be standing around like you got nothing to do? Right? They're still standing there idle, this crowd. And he finds these in, in the 11th hour. And they're standing idle. And he says, why stand you here all the day idle? They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. And he saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard. <clears throat> and whatsoever is right, then shall ye receive. Now if you... If you stay with me and you watch that, the, the first group is the only group he actually said, I'll give you a penny. Mm -hmm. Every other group, he said, I'll pay you what's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> and this group at 5 o'clock, they agree on the same thing. He said, I'll pay you what's right. Go to work. And they went to work, and they worked that last hour. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, it's time for payday. And there's about ready to be a fight break out. Because <laughs> you know what? The guys have been working and sweating and toiling. They are wore out. They have worked 12 hours. And you know what? They're going to get paid exactly the same amount as <coughs> that last group that only worked one hour. 
Or is my shop steward? Yeah, where's your shop steward? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they was, there's going to be some mad folks here. Now look at it, verse 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers. Hey, give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. Everybody got the same wage. Everyone got a penny. Whether you worked one hour, six hours, nine hours, or twelve hours, they all got the same penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they that had received it, they murmured. And they, I think they was upset. Mm -hmm. They murmured against the good man of the house. Saying, hey, these last have wrought but one hour. And thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Hey, we're the ones that bore the heat of the day. We're the ones that sweat and sweat and sweat. And you give these guys the same amount you give us, and all they work is <laughs> the last hour? Man, they're murmuring. Mm -hmm. They're upset with the good man of the house. But notice what we find in the scripture here. He says here, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Right. And you know what? They did. Yes. They had. Take that thine is, go thy way. I will give unto the last, even as unto thee. <coughs> is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? And thine, is thine eye evil because I am good? Now having said all of that, there's a real lesson here for us this morning in this parable. And you know what it is? It's the wonders of God's wonderful mercy. Amen. It's, it's the wonder of God's amazing, amazing grace. Yeah. I mean, in the kingdom of heaven, this is not the rule of more work will get you more. It's the rule of grace. Yes, amen. It's the, great, it's the rule of you can't work enough to get more. You can't do enough to be received or to be accepted in the kingdom of God. Jesus is really teaching here. It is the rule of grace. Hey, grace, freely given. Remember what he said to all them other groups? I'll give you what's right. Amen. And when, they, and when we trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, you know what? He gives us what's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, not because we've been good enough, or not because we've worked in the heat of the day, or not because we put in the full 12 hours. Listen, I'll tell you what, everyone that received Jesus receives the equal path to heaven. Yes. Right? Amen. Everyone that receives Christ receives the same gift of salvation. Amen? Amen. I, I mean, I want you to get that in this this morning. Grace given freely. What, what, is, what, what is the gift? Well, it's not the penny for the day's wage. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And if you want to relate that to something we can get a hold of this morning, everyone that trusts Christ as Savior, you get heaven. Amen. Amen. You get heaven. Now we could preach on heaven a while, couldn't we? Oh, yeah. Hey, all of you that accept Jesus as your Savior, we get the, get the wonderful, the wonders of God's mercy, the wonders of His amazing grace this morning. I mean, we get reconciled back to God. We trust Christ as our Savior, not by anything we can do or what we have done or, or how long we think we've worked. Listen, please. It's by His simple Saving grace. Yeah, amen. Amen. That people come to the saving knowledge of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And reconciled. Hey, brought back to a right relationship with God. Oh, aren't you glad? I'm talking probably for the most part a good Christian crowd here today. Aren't you glad you say? Amen. amen. I mean, praise the Lord. And so the rule of grace, it saves. It reconciles. It puts you on the path where you can walk with God every day of your life. And we see in this parable what it really reflects this morning. It, it really reflects the mercy and the grace of God. This is the rule of grace. And it's not the rule of more work. It's not the rule of who is more deserving or, or who has earned more. I'll tell you something. I'm glad salvation don't work the way things did in that vineyard. Right. right. Or a lot of people today would be upset and murmuring against God. Yeah. 
Well, look what I've done for God. I mean, I've worked for God for years and years and years. And somebody just got saved the other day and they're going to the same heaven. Praise the Lord, they sure are. Amen. Hey, they sure are. Come on. Amen. It's not about what we've done or what we've heard. It's not the, it's not the mission of, of works. It's the gospel of grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's, it's the rule of God's grace. Thank you, Lord. So it has nothing to do with does it being deserving. Because I can tell you right now, looking out at all you bunch of sinners today, <laughs> none of you deserve hell. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. We all deserve hell. Yeah, That's right. right. So it's not about deserving. But there's where the mercy of God steps in. Amen. Praise, Lord. Praise the Lord. Didn't deserve it. Didn't earn it. But I trusted Jesus and he gave me eternal life. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I like that. In the parable, work is going on and, and, and the entry is free. And when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior today, you know what? We serve him freely. Yes. I mean, what's the parable about? It's about a bunch of people working. And if you got saved, you ought to be working today. Amen. But you're not going to be rewarded because of the work. That's right. Now, I do believe there's rewards in heaven. Uh -huh. I believe there's a diversity of rewards having to do with what some things you've done. But having to go to heaven has nothing to do with what you've done. Yeah. Understand? It's grace. It's God's mercy. I mean, in the mercy of, in the grace of God, if you're saved, here it is. Simple as this. It's not Jesus plus works or plus what you can do. Hey, it's Jesus alone. Amen. It's Jesus alone. Yes. You don't need to be trying to add some. Too many people have tried that for years. Right. We don't need to try to improve the gospel. Amen. It's Jesus alone that will get you to heaven. Amen. So that's the gospel of mercy and grace. What's so wonderful is this. When we die in this life, hey, in the world, the lights go out. And all of a sudden, in heaven, the lights come on for you. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna, I'll share this with you. I know Sister Alberta wouldn't mind. She shared with me they was able to go up and be with Brother Al when he passed. The hospital had called and they, they said we're going to keep him, try to keep him comfortable till they arrive. And, and Alberta, uh, Robin, uh, granddaughter, actually, they got to go up. They was with Al when he passed over. And I tell you what, when the lights went out here, the lights turned on in heaven. Amen. Amen. Here's what she said. She said, when he, as, he, as he passed from this life to the next, he was reaching up to the ceiling and looking up into the ceiling. He was seeing something. Yes. Amen. I've heard too many stories like that. Yes. I've heard other stories about those that died without Christ. Yes. Miserable, horrible deaths. Yes. But I tell you what, if you've got Jesus in your heart, the lights go out here and they come on on the other side. Praise the Lord. Lord. The Lamb of God. Man, if, you, if you're lost today, what are you waiting for? Come on. Man, eternal life. This is God's mercy we're talking Amen. about. This is the grace of God. Amen. And so the master of the vineyard, he has absolute, listen, he has absolute power to admit literally any laborer that he wants to bring into the vineyard. As long as they agree to come, he has the authority to hire them. And as the parable would relate, any, only God can save lost souls. Amen. Did you see the way that parable ended? Jesus said, Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine hour evil because I am good? You know what? God will do what God wants to do. Amen. Right? And only God has the authority to save lost souls. Only God has the authority, listen to me, to admit you into heaven. That's right. Hey, no church. Well, I, I want to break, don't want to break your bubble here, but. Uh, no, no church and no free will Baptist church can get you from here to heaven. That's right. No preacher, no priest, no, no denomination. Only God can get you to heaven. Amen. Amen. God and God alone. So God's promises, what are they? They are absolute. Amen. God wouldn't have to answer to anybody. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now the second thing I want you to see in this parable, how it reflects. I want you to get this. I like this. I like this part. I want you to see how it reflects how God calls people into His kingdom at every stage of life. At every stage of life, God is still calling people to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me share this with you.
Let's go back to verse 1 and 2. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, went, went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. Now what's this group? This is the group at 6 a.m. in the morning at the very first part of the day. Can I tell you what? This is those that are very young. And God's still saving the young. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, as the day goes on, it moves in toward the sunset years, doesn't it? Right. But it begins at 6 a.m. Now, with that in mind, I'm glad the Lord still seeks and saves lost young people. Yes. Amen. Uh, listen, the one, the one thing we have missed so much here in the church recently, of course, is youth ministry and junior church and seeing young kids give their heart to Christ. And man, I love that. I love preaching to them kids. And you know what? Those young children. And the Holy Spirit dealt with their heart about their soul. And they hadn't went out and committed a whole lot of sin yet. They didn't have a whole lot of regrets to to worry about as yet. But their heart was young, tender and young. Yes. And you know, they had a soft heart. And when they heard how Jesus loved them and saved them, would, would save them, it's hard telling how many young people we saw saved, isn't it? Those that were at the youth. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad for those that get saved at the 6 o'clock hour. Amen. 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 But then you notice what it goes on to say. Notice verse 3. Notice verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Now these are young adults. They are no longer the very, very young. In the, as we think of the day, the 12-hour day, there's those now at 9 in the morning, and they're getting a little older. Now these are the, the, the young crowd, the young, young adults, if you will. Possibly teenagers or maybe those in their 20s and 30s. And some of these folks, they've now grown to the point God's just the farthest thing from their mind. They're too used to running with the world. Yeah. Feel like they got their whole life ahead of them, and they're going to live forever. <laughs> but I'm glad God's still saving some folks in that crowd. Amen. 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 Young man there, sitting back there this morning. And you know what? Last Sunday night, he gave his heart to Christ, and God saved him. Praise the Lord. 17 years old. Praise, Praise God. He got saved at the 9 o'clock hour. Yeah. Right? Hey, look at this. Let's go on. How about verse 5? And again, he went out about the 6th hour and ninth hour. And he did likewise. Now, those here at noon and 3, you got you to gotta realize the biggest part of the day is behind you now. Yeah. And now we're up about midway. Going on 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What crowd would that represent, preacher? Well, I would say probably those in their 40s, 50s, maybe even some of you in your 60s. You know? And by this time in life, you know how that crowd thinks? Usually for that crowd, they have said no to Jesus by now so many times. Their heart has begun to get hard. They began to realize that they've lived a long time without God in their life. No use changing things now. Yeah. Some of this crowd becomes hard to reach. I can tell you this. A young person is a lot more apt to give their heart to Jesus than an old person. Right. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. And the older you, listen, this is a fact. You mark this down what I'm about to say. The older you get, the harder it will ever get for you to get saved. That's right. Because <clears throat> the heart gets hard. You get cold to the things of God. You get used to turning off the Holy Spirit when he knocks at the door. So there's that crowd, the 40s and 50s and the 60s. But then look at verse 6 and 7. In about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle. And he says, why stay here all the day idle? Because no man hath hired me. He saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard. And whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. Now, who do you think would fit into this 11th hour crowd? Who do you think would fit into this crowd? It's though, by the way, when you get the 11th hour, it's almost sunset. That's right. Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. When you hit the 11th hour, it's almost sunset. Mm -hmm. 
Well, how would that be for some folks? Well, for some folks, it's, uh, it could be 60s, 70s. By the way, God can take you any time. Right, right. Don't be getting anything from this message thinking you're guaranteed to live that long. No, you're not. That's right. But as a whole, now we're in the 11th hour. Now we're dealing with a sunset crowd. And this crowd has absolutely all their life been telling Jesus no. They've rejected him. They've denied him. They don't need him. They don't want him. And yet, the wonderful thing about God's mercy, he's still knocking on their heart. Yes, thank you, Jesus. He's still calling them to get saved. Yes. He really is. The 11 o'clock hour. And some of this crowd dies in their last days. In their last hours. <coughs> I mean, sunset's coming. Mm -hmm. Right? Brother Dale, I hope you don't mind me using, using an example. But Dale's brother Jim, you know what? He got saved at sunset, didn't he? Praise the Lord. Right before he died. Amen. He gave his heart to Christ. Now, you want to put all this parable in, in, in real terms? You know what that means? Some of you folks have been serving Jesus for 50, 60 years. Maybe some of you longer than that. And he got saved just a couple of days before he went home to be with the Lord. And you know what? All in the same heaven. Yeah, Amen. Praise, 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 Praise God. God. Yes. Not because of working or earning or what you're doing. Because of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Because of mercy and grace. grace. Hey, that 11th hour, what age group would that be? I'll tell you something. We've sung happy birthday to this guy so many times. <laughs> 90 years old, uh, for her, it could be 1130. <laughs> it could be the 11th and a half hour. Uh, next month, if mom's still alive, she's getting ready to turn 104. It could be 1159 yes. for mom. I'm just, are you with me? Yeah. I'm just saying, isn't it good that God saves from the youngest? Amen. To the oldest. Amen. Amen. And, that's, and that's mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's mercy. Yes. Uh, that, that, that reminds me. Uh, now, I share this quite often because it's on my heart when I get to preaching like this. The man lived in Bontair, Lloyd Mayo, <coughs> rejected Christ all his life. His wife was in church, but he was not. Witness to, he got saved on a Tuesday night. He died on a Thursday. He got saved at the 11th hour. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Uh, it was getting ready. The sun was going down. And by the way, the sun's getting ready to go down for a lot of folks today, and some don't even know it yet. Right. But the good news is, God's still calling. Amen. Jesus is still saving. Aren't you glad? Yes. I mean, Christ reaching out with grace and mercy to every stage of life, from the very young to the very old. And at the end, what did he get? They all received the same wage. Heaven. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. They all received the same wage. Heaven. Man, everybody wants to say praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. So I, I, I know I've repeated myself. So it's not about what you've done or what you've earned. Because we deserve nothing and we've worked for nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Christ alone saves and calls and pleads. And calls us through mercy and through grace. I mean, the person that got saved when they was eight years old and the person that got saved when they was 90 and died two, two days later, they're all in the same heaven. Amen. When God calls them home. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Young and old, both going to heaven. By the way, church, that is the wonder of God's mercy. Amen. That is the wonder of God's amazing grace. And some folks this morning, it's the 11th hour, it's almost sunset approaching, and the householder is still crying out, listen, come in, come in, hey, hurry up, yes. come in, and all you ought to come, Amen. you ought to come, I mean that person that's maybe had no prayer, no worship, no relationship with God, and oh how God still in mercy calls them to come. Even until the very end. Yes. God bless you. Let's stand. You know what he found as he went into the vineyard?
there was a whole lot of folks standing idle. Why stand here idle all the day long? And I believe there's a lot of folks spiritually idle today. They're idle. Some that have never been saved, and some that have made professions of faith in the past and just turned God off. Listen, why stand you idle mm -hmm. when Jesus is knocking at your door? Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. Would you bow your head with me? Let's have prayer. Father, we pray just now. <coughs> Holy Spirit, the work of grace right now. Take this message. Drive it home into the heart of those that are here. And if there's someone, or young in life, or middle-aged, or maybe they've gotten much older, and sunset is approaching, oh Lord, I pray that they've never been saved. This will be the day of their salvation. So thankful for God's mercy and saving grace. Lord, would you meet the needs of this hour? And I pray that as you ask them to come into the vineyard, that they'll come. Oh, they can receive heaven if they just come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I was saying, why don't you come? Just as I am with the